What's up, insiders? Today I got an interesting little kit for you today. I'm talking about the IPV Revo kit. This one is an auto squonker and it actually comes with a quite capable RDA. Before we get into the video, make sure you check out our new merch site. You can get my tagline on a shirt or a hoodie. There is your mod and it's a big girl. Check that thing out, man. Nice and big. This is a dual 18650 squonker. You have three star screws holding the top plate in place. You have two star screws over here holding the stainless steel 510 plate in place. You have some IPV branding over here. You push down on the pin. It has a very stiff spring with a very short throw like most squonking pins, all right? It does have that relu type of shape to it that we've seen before, but this one's a little different. The squonk bottle or squonk compartment is much different than the relu shaped mods that we've seen in the past that they've made into squonkers. Most of the times you have a battery on this side, a battery on this side, and a squonk bottle over here. That's not the way they did this, and we'll get into that in a minute. On the front side of the mod, you can see you got a nice button here, raised, nice and clicky. This is your color screen right here. Here is your joystick that will control your menu system, and there is your micro USB port for charging and updates. Nice carbon fiber, man. I'm digging the gunmetal paint, and I'm digging the gunmetal carbon fiber. Just really, really nice. It's got a little bit of texture to it. It's a little bumpy. I kind of like that. It does have some type of clear coat over it that gives it a smooth, silky feel, but it's still got a little bit of bumpiness to it that you can feel when you glide your finger over. Really nice, nice job on this. I mean, just a beautiful mod. I like it a lot. Now over here, right here, this is your squonk compartment right here. Now you can see it's hard. It's a hard type of plastic. This is not soft, you don't push it. You got this little fingernail tab right here. You pop it down like that. It's on there pretty securely. And I have to say, man, this thing's been pretty bone dry. There's been no leaking or residue or condensation or anything like that. Now, if you look over here, you got this stainless steel pin here and that's attached to a pump and that's gonna plug into this little tube right there on on this side right here you can see the tube running down this plugs into that tube and that's what's going to suck your juice up into your atomizer pretty ingenious man pretty nice job it's the same pump that they use in the ipv mini v3 so it's very very quiet now here's the squonking compartment you can see it's kind of contoured over here all right on the top this is the tube that goes into the pump and this is your fill port right here now i will warn you when you first get this this fill port is in there tight it's a bitch to get out it really is you kind of got to have some girly nails but once you get it out man it's no problem you're able to fill up, you're able to even use bull nose bottles on this one, shouldn't be an issue. Needle nose bottles are preferred though, but it's a nice tab. I just wish they got this part to stay on. I don't like that it comes off. I don't like that you could possibly lose it. And I don't like that they did not give you a spare. They should have included a spare plug. So you pop it back in there, just like that, when you're done filling, and now you're ready to pop it into the mod and vape. In order to reinstall it, you just slide it in just like this, and boom, click it right in. It don't go nowhere, man. It actually takes some force to get it out. They did a nice job with the tension on this. It really doesn't move. You know, it's got a little bit of a wiggle like that, very, very slight, but it's not easily, it doesn't easily come off. They did a really, really nice job on that. Now, on the bottom of the mod, you can see there's your battery door, okay? You just pop it open, just like that, it's spring-loaded, so that's really nice. Over there, you can see the battery markings. I kind of like the way they did the cutouts. They didn't exactly do them in white, but at least it's black against whatever that is, stainless steel, so I don't mind that, okay? The battery indicator markings are clear. Dual 18650 mod with a spring-loaded door. Pop the latch down, pull the latch there, and then push it shut just like that. It don't move, man. 
It's solid. Nice, nice job on that. No battery rattle at all. In order to turn the mod on, five clicks on, you see the IPV splash screen. It's gonna boot up for a second. Let's go over the screen real quick, all right? I had to try a couple of different lighting combinations to get this screen to actually show up on camera. There's your M1 preset, your resistance, your voltage, your wattage, your battery meter, preheat. That 30 there represents your squonk pump and how fast it'll pump liquid in. And this is the mode you're in, stainless steel 316. It shows that even if you're in wattage mode, it's a common thing among the Yee -he chips. Now let's go over the menu system real quick. You can see I'm in standard preheat. If I push to the left, I go to powerful, powerful plus, those X, X, Q modes right there. And then I go to echo, economy, soft, preheat, and standard. If I push to the right, you'll see my M1 settings change on top right there, right? See, it goes, goes all the way up to M5, back to M1, right? If I push this button in, now I can adjust my squonk level of juice. With this particular mod, I've been keeping it at 30, and I've been having some success. If I push the joystick in again, my wattage number turns red. Now I can scroll up or down with the joystick. goes all the way up to 200 watts. It does not round robin. Okay, now if I want to put it into temperature control mode, right I push the joystick in again now I'm in jewel mode for stainless steel I can adjust my jewels with the joystick the same way I did with the wattage all the way up to 100 joules okay now if I hit the button again there's my temperature right you can see it goes all the way up to 300 degrees Celsius from 100 to 300 degrees Celsius okay now if I want to keep it there, I can keep it there. All right. Now, the other thing is there's a secondary menu system. Okay. Let me put it back to wattage. In order to get out of that menu system, just hit the fire button. Five clicks. Okay. That's where I turn the system off. I can do manual TCR and I can go into my, my uh, pump, my electronic squonker right there, and I can turn it on or off. Okay. We're going to keep it on. And that's it, man. I mean, there's nothing much else to go over. If you want to get out of this menu, you kind of just got to wait for it to time out. Now, if I want to change my degrees, I have mine set in Fahrenheit. It goes up to 572 degrees Fahrenheit. When I'm in TC, I normally like to run in the 480s to 500 degree range. You can see it adjusts in one degree increments. All right. And that's it, folks. I mean, that's the whole menu system. If you've had a Yeehe board before, nothing, you know, crazy here, nothing that you haven't seen before. This is a typical Yeehe chipset. So I just wanted to give you a quick size comparison. Now, I have to say, man, when I first got the IPV, the form factor alone, the bulbousness of it, actually reminded me of the G-Box dual battery squonker. This is probably one of the first dual battery squonkers. It has a regular squonk bottle, but you can see, man, the shape, the shape is very, very similar, and they feel similar in the hand. This one feels a little lighter and definitely feels like it's built better. It definitely feels like it's of higher quality, but if you like the feel of the G-Box, you can see, man, it's actually a little taller than the G-Box. The G-Box is actually a little shorter, but I think the G-Box also feels a little fatter in the hand. But it's very, very similar in the hand to the G-Box. And then I just wanted to compare it to one of my all-time favorite dual battery squonkers. This is the Ownboy Rage. Totally different form factor. The Ownboy Rage feels more comfortable in the hand. It's shorter, but it doesn't have that auto squonk feature. All right, but I just wanted to give you a point of reference. Let's take a look at the Finder BF RDA. Nice looking drip tip, check that out, nice and big. Goon style drip tip, you can see the O-rings are on the inside, all right? All of your other Goon style drip tips should have no problem fitting in there, no issues at all, okay? I do like that. 
you can see we have adjustable bottom airflow. See that right there? The bottom airflow RDA, stoppers on both ends, dual bottom airflow. So whatever you do on one happens on the other. I kind of like these little flat panels, like these little chunky panels that they did. Actually kind of gives it a little bit of a breakup. It just doesn't look like all stainless steel. I like that difference in texture and look. Nice job on that IPV. Pop the barrel section open. You can see inside, very, very conical design. This part does not come off. It is a one-piece barrel section, but that interior has a beautiful stepped-up conical design. Here's what we've all been waiting for. This is the deck, basically a block-style velocity deck, and it's kind of got like that Kennedy airflow going on. Here's your bottom airflow right there. Your airflow goes in there and up that way. So the bottom of your coil should lay across this airflow. Kind of nice, you know, uh, it's a tried and true design. Decent, deep juice well, all right? Nice job on the juice well. I got no issues with it. The only issue I do have is the screws go in from the side, so you are gonna crush your leads. Some people don't like that. Me, I really don't care, as long as they make a good connection. On the bottom of the atomizer, you can see gold-plated squonking pin. Insulator ring around that, stainless steel threading around that. There is some IPV Revo branding on it. The squonking pin does come pre-installed. Also included in the packaging, you get some cotton aglets, you get a tri-tool, some spare screws, deck screws, some spare O-rings, and you get two rather nice coils. One thing that's interesting is there's no traditional pin in here. So this RDA can only be used as a squonker. You also get a micro USB wire for charging and updates. And that's what it looks like all put together. All right, inside is, let's go over those cons and pros. First con's gonna be, some people are gonna think that RDA is kind of old school, mm -hmm. you know, kind of old hat, but the bottom line is it is simple and effective, but some people are gonna, you know, want me to give it a con because it's kind of old hat. So I gotta chalk it up to a con, but we're gonna talk about the RDA a little later as well. It's big and it's bulky, mm -hmm. that's a con. Another con is on the squonk tank, that rubber piece totally mm -hmm. comes off. I don't like that, I think it's easy to lose. I think they should have figured out a way to attach it. The menu system, mm -hmm. as with most Yeehee devices, has a little bit of a learning curve. It's not the most intuitive system in the world. If you've used a Yeehee chip before, you won't have any problem, but if you never have, there's a bit of a learning curve to it. And the last con's gonna be, this thing is you know, kind of innovative. I wish they would have gone the extra step and put a Type-C charging port in it. Mm. I would have appreciated that, especially with this type of chipset in it. But that's it on the cons, no real deal breakers. Let's move on to the pros because the pros are plentiful. First pro is gonna be, it's big, yes, but it is comfortable. It's a comfortable hold. It's not awkward in any way. I actually enjoy carrying it around. I like it. I like the way it feels in the hand. It's well built, there's no doubt about that. That's a pro. Capacity on this thing, it's just a monster in the capacity department. That's a pro. The RDA on this one, the flavor and clouds are actually really good. Let me show you what I'm working with. I got a 0.18 build in here right now at 85 watts. Check it out. Man, the flavor on that, the flavor that I'm getting from that bottom airflow is just fantastic. I've been enjoying this a lot, man. Now the setting for the squonker, I got it 30. And every once in a while, I do have to manually pump a little juice into it. If I put it as high as 35, it kind of leaks. So with this RDA, I would suggest that you set it at between 30 and 32, depending on the thickness of your juice. Let me get another vape. Just nice. Full saturation, full flavor, and I got the airflow cut down about three quarters, and that's where I like it on this RDA. Love the screen on this one. It's super bright. It's well laid out. You can see it in all lighting conditions. Love the auto squonk. The auto squonk feature is awesome. The pump is definitely quiet. It's just as quiet 
as like the IPV Mini V3. I believe it has the same type of pump. This one's easy to fill, man. And the RDA on this one is easy to build and wick. So that's it, insiders. Those are our cons and pros. Let's talk about this one a little bit. I love this squonker, man. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, it's big. It's bulky. But I love the capacity on it. And I love the performance of the Yeehee chipset. I also like the performance of the RDA. Yeah, it's old school. But this thing has some killer flavor. And you can cloud out a room in no time. 10 ml capacity. Flavor and clouds. Auto squonk. Yeehee chipset. I mean, really, man, what else can you ask for? This one is Deuces Jack approved. Let's go over some of the specs on the IPV Revo kit. It is a dual 18650 mod that measures in at 93 by 47.2 millimeters. It's available in black and gunmetal. It has a 200 watt maximum output. It sports the SX605E chipset. It will fire down to 0.15 in power mode and 0.05 in TC mode. It has auto temp control, power mode, TC, and TCR mode. Preheats include economy, standard, powerful, and powerful plus. The RDA measures in at 24 by 34.9 millimeters. It does have an 810 drip tip and it's mainly constructed out of stainless steel. The internal charging on the mod is at two amps. Protections include low voltage, overheat, short circuit, and low resistance. The squonk capacity on this is a whopping 10 mLs. Thanks for watching the video, Insiders. Definitely appreciate it. Remember, we're not a monetized channel, so we'd appreciate it if you check out our new merch store. You can get my tagline on a shirt like you see me wearing, or you can get it on a hoodie as well. We have some other great designs that you can put on a t-shirt or a hoodie. Here's another one of them. Vape King shirt. And here's one of my personal favorites. Vape so hard, the FDA wanna find me. Go over to our new store and check it out. So that's it, Insiders. That's all I got for you guys today. Remember, it's more important than ever now that you fight for your right to vape. Call your state legislators, call your governors, call the White House, because it's important that you keep living that vape life. We're out of here. Deuces.